All right. So taking just one pinky ball, we're going to start with placing it under sternum. And I'd just like you to roll the ball underneath the bone of your collarbone. So you're tracing the muscles that live here. Just out to the edge, the hollow of the shoulder, and then back. And if you find that your head starts turning in opposition or moving with it, just allow that and notice it. Now we're gonna do the same thing above that bone. Like you could pull the skin slightly away from all the muscles that attach up. And you'll notice that these stretches begin to extend also down through the back of your neck and the back of your body. When you start feeling your hand want to respond, allow it. And only as much as feels appropriate. We're not trying to prove a point here. We're trying to open up pathways. Now we're gonna take this ball and we're gonna do the same action, rolling more directly right beneath the bone. And we're gonna do it against the wall. So I'm gonna press the ball into it, into the wall. And then I'm just gonna smear my chest over and then back. So it's a different way of creating that pressure, but you're still working for the same effect to create spaciousness and awareness. And as the ball migrates, just put it back. Find the one spot that's the most tight on you. Stay there and move your body up and down. If you are familiar with sketching, you'll know the term cross hatching. And it's when you make lines one direction, then the other direction to create shading. You wanna do some cross hatching here. So you go up and down and you go side to side. And basically it's kind of evening out whatever fascial, fuzzy, sticky, knotty bits might be there. And then give yourself some broad strokes, lower down through the sternum to iron everything out in front. And notice if you feel the forward part of your deltoid here beginning to release as a result. Now from here, we're gonna go ahead and map the outside edge of the shoulder. So we're gonna keep the ball on the shoulder. We're gonna turn ourselves around and back, tracing from the clavicle to the top of the scapula and back. So you get to turn around the ball. And notice if there are little ridges inside. My husband refers to that on the road as driving by braille. When you like roll over the edge and it goes rumble. Often there's driving by a braille also in your body. Just pay attention to where the gravelly bits are and see if you can create the intention of smoothing them out before you get there. One more time, we're going to turn around towards the back and then we're going to stay on the back and continue this mapping along the spine of the scapula.
And then we're going to go up and down the inside edge of the scapula. So it's slightly triangular and you might find yourself angling up and angling down as a result. Really clearly tracing out that line. And then go to the inside edge and do a little through the hollow bits there. Okay, so now we're gonna keep the ball in the middle of the scapula and start to raise and lower our arm. So let it slide on the wall. And just feel the movement that you're creating around the ball. And you can shift your body to give yourself pressure in different areas, continuing to move the arm. So wherever it feels like you wanna learn and get clarification or more freedom. Now let's leave the arm upwards and bring the ball inside the scapula. So you're in the rhomboids. When I say inside the scapula, in between both scapula, I just raise it lower, that arm. And then take the arm down. Shrug the shoulder up and down. And then do the same thing by bending and straightening your knees. Stay there. Pin down that place, you know, the base of the trapezius where it's coming down, however it feels tight. It's gonna be different on every person, but everyone has one. Traction that piece of you down and let your head turn right and left a few times. You can start to press the base of your skull up against the back of the wall for this. And then keep your head on one side, nod it up and down. Roll to the other side, do the same. And then come off, touch the ball, stand, take a breath and notice how one arm feels and possibly is so much longer than the other. And then we'll do the same thing, other side. So start with just rolling that ball and the muscle beneath the clavicle about four times. maybe six and allow your head to begin to counterbalance that if it wants. And then going over the top too. Catching and pulling the skin in ways that feel really good to you. Noticing when there's reverberations and the tension that go down your arm or up into your neck. Okay, 
Okay, we're gonna start to map everything now against the wall. So right beneath the bone a few times, and then from there, we'll massage everything out, catch tension, and then we'll be mapping the shoulder after that. Starting right beneath the clavicle. looking for the spot that has the most tension, the one that feels like there's a piece of tape stuck inside your skin. I mean, you got it, do your cross hatching. And then going into longer passes. And then over to map out the head of the deltoid from front to back. And this time we'll take it all the way around to the back and trace the spine of the scapula. And then going to the interior of it, up and down. I remember marveling at a scapula the last time I was in my anatomy lab because the interior ridges of it are formed around the shape of the ribs. And there's this one that just sits as like a notch inside the scapula. And a holds onto it, it's a rib, and it can rotate any way around it. I just was holding this bone, the scapula, and put my finger there and looked at how beautifully it's shaped and how easily it can glide in any direction. Our body forms itself around the impact that we give it, around the internal structure shapes, it's pretty cool. So from here, we'll just map a little bit of the outside triangle of the scapula, the one that goes from the armpit towards the spine. And then we'll catch any spot that we want and start to just raise and lower our arm, exploring movement, noticing the mechanisms underneath the pressure of the ball. Now take that ball into the rhomboids and take your arm up and raise and lower the scapula by curving the arm up and down. And then taking the arm down, you can readjust the ball if you want and bring the scapula up and down with the arm down and let the neck respond to.
and then catching the place where it feels most relevant, pulling down on the muscles that hang from your skull to your neck. Turn the head side to side, pressing it against the wall if that feels good. And grinding the back of the head and the jaw. Feeling a little healthy tension right around the muscles of the cervical spine, the ones that live behind your throat. So if you're not sure where that is, swallow. Feel the muscles that activate and see if you can use those muscles to help to turn your head side to side. And then keep the head on one side, look up and down. Change sides. And then coming off. <sighs> Release that, shake your head out for a moment. We're gonna do just a little bit of teacups. So grab yourself a block, I like a cork block, and come back and meet me here. So once you have your block, the rule is that you want to just keep it facing the ceiling. So the hand is open on the bottom. I'm not holding it. And you start to circle your arm in front of your body and then bring it back out. And maybe in front a different way and then eventually navigate behind your body. How can you get it behind you? So you're just trying to not drop the block and you're gonna move around that. And then we'll pass it to the other side. And then we'll bring the block together. We'll have one good morning to conclude this chapter. Push the block together. Feel the same activity in your hamstrings and your glutes and your thighs. So all of your limbs are clapping together. And then sit down just a little bit to lengthen your tailbone backwards. The pelvis is moved back, but your abdominals move up. Press the arms firmly together. Raise the block as far as you can. Feel the scapula glide. Feel the length in the front of the spine. Hinge forward. Keep the pressure with the hands on the block and keep them by your ears. Bring the arms back up, bring the body up too. Lower the arms all the way down. And then we're gonna keep squeezing the arms. We're gonna look up and push our chin up and our teeth up. Bring yourself back to center. Repeat that one last time, pushing up. Lengthen the spine from top and bottom, hinge out. And as you come back up to stack vertically on gravity, maintain the length you found. Down with the hands in a semicircle with the jaw. And then come up, pull the block into yourself, shrug your shoulders up. Inhale and exhale through your nose, pushing your sternum forward. We're gonna exhale, open the mouth wide and look down at our chin to bring the head up. Okay, 